Right. Morning, morning. Welcome, everybody. Wisdom's Chats, uh, Wednesday, the 7th of April, I believe. Yeah. Uh, is that science fiction or science fact? Uh, interesting question. So what we're talking about this morning is uh, things that were first portrayed in science fiction that uh, ultimately became science fact. So, Lee, this was your topic, strangely enough, I think, uh, wasn't it? So I'm going to let you let you kick off and uh, see what homework you did uh, in terms of bringing up some interesting developments that have become reality. Well, well, I can definitely hear your bias, Ivan, because the, the topic was how has fiction become reality? Um, not just science fiction, but but we will we will will allow science fiction into the into the equation. <laughs> um, so um, yes, I did do some research because it's, uh, and it, I'm research, uh, we have this amazing vehicle, right? Google, you just type something in and some amazing information comes your way because some way someone has written an article on it. So um, yes, there have been some incredible inventions from science fiction. Uh, so Jules Verne has a lot uh, of influence in what we what has been uh, invented, uh, including uh, the submarine. Uh, not the entire submarine, but certainly part, part <coughs> sorry, parts of it were invented by somebody who was inspired by um, ten thousand leagues under the sea, and the helicopter is was uh, also. Um, inspired by Jules Verne's Nautilus, and that was a French inventor. Uh, so that's fascinating. And then, of course, Star Trek. I think there's lots of things that were invented out of Star Trek, but the one that I read is the cell phone um, uh, from Motorola. So Motorola used the Star Trek communicator as their key their model for for their design of the cell phone of mobile phone so yes yeah, science fiction but then i wanted to kind of explore a little bit further does did fiction have any influence on society and culture and uh yes wonderful you can google that and there's an article written on that and how culture has how fiction has changed culture and uh, interestingly alexander the great slept with Homer's Iliad. And that actually in, informed um, the culture, their philosophy and language, um, as did Dante's comedy. So he wrote the comedy, Dante wrote uh, his comedy on in the local Tuscany dialect. And that has actually become what we call Italian today. So it actually became the national language of Italy. So these are interesting facts about how fiction has changed the world. Uh, but I wanted to end with just a personal story. Uh, and that is uh, one of the movies that uh, impacted me many, many years ago is a as a little quirky Australian movie called Strictly Ballroom. And in it, there is a quote that says, a fear, a, a life lived in fear is a life half lived. And the quote in that, that quote changed my life at that moment in time. It just flipped a switch in my head and gave me courage to do new things and to step out and to um, take the opportunities that were presented to me and uh, not to hold back. Uh, so that's my story about fiction and fact and how fiction has changed fact and the world and me. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Lee. All right, so uh, Ed, is there any uh, fact to your fiction, or is it uh, the other way around? Yeah, um, I couldn't. I, I I couldn't really get around to to this subject. It it didn't float my boat really. Um, and, and I'm with Lee that um, you know the whole 
focus seemed to have been on science fiction with, with, with UI, even whereas the whole thing was about fiction. And I really wish there was some, some, some fact in fiction because I could have really done with Sleeping Beauty being true this morning because I didn't want to wake up. I could have done with 99 years more sleep. But I think some of the stuff, we, we want to see it and with the benefit of hindsight, we see it. We pick out all the stuff in, in Star Trek that happened, but I don't ever remember actually having been teleported anywhere unless it was via Zoom. So beam me up, Scotty, just doesn't work, does it? Um, and warp drive, does that exist? I think we remember the things looking back that we want to see, we see the things we want to see. And yes, fiction will come up with lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of things. And at some point in time, some of them are bound to come true, aren't they? It's like, you know, if you put a load of monkeys in front of typewriters, they'll eventually write the whole of Shakespeare. Um, so, yeah, I, I, although I kind of do think there are some things that, 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 that come true because yesterday my, my heating broke down and I've got a very good contract and the guys turned up to fix it and they told me what the problem was. My thermostat had stopped talking to my boiler. So obviously machines are much more intelligent than we ever thought they were because they can talk to each other, um, which is quite good. So they, they sorted that problem out and my, now my boiler and my, my thermostat are chatting away quite nicely and the temperature is nicely controlled. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm not a great believer in, in this whole fact and fiction thing, because I think we, we um, use hindsight and, and, and see what we want to see and pick out the bits we want to pick out. Um, and we, we ignore the things that didn't turn out, you know, for example, time travel. Although I believe Kamal and Ish have both been to front of time travel because they were arriving at meetings at the wrong time yesterday yeah. from what I heard um, so <laughs> I'm not sure whether they're on the on on the South African wisdoms chat the the UK wisdoms chat or or, or the US wisdoms chat so um, I just don't know yeah so that, that, that's all I've got to say and I'm not going to say much because because of the time difference between this one and the UK one not much time to have breakfast and I can't just magic it up. I've still got to cook the blooming thing. Oh, uh, Ed, we need to drag you into the future. Uh, definitely. Yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks for that, just putting a damper on the whole discussion. I mean, really, come on. Uh, <laughs> you know, what, 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 what about 3D printers, Ed? You know, those were, those were designed uh, back in start, the Star Trek days, and they're reality now. They're even, uh, they're even printing 3D, uh, you know, printing steaks, uh, you know, vegetarian steaks through 3D printers these days. So food replication is a reality, yeah? Yeah, there you go. So it is. <laughs> Sorry, Ed, yeah. I was going to say, actually, sort of, um, you know, fake meat is bad enough without it having been printed. I, I couldn't agree more, Ed. Uh, yeah, but I, but I know you don't eat the real stuff anyway. So uh, you know what's the difference whether it's whether it's fake or whether whether it's three uh, D replicated. Uh, uh, you know, it's it's still not meat. So Liz, yeah, uh, welcome. Your first time with us. Uh, you've got a little bit of an idea of the topic we're chatting about. So your thoughts on fact. Uh, fiction becoming fact, and, and I've been corrected twice already this morning, so I'm going to try and not make the same mistake again, but uh, who knows? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I suppose, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's basically stimulation of the imagination and that sort of thing. So um, that, that obviously stimulates people's thoughts and ideas and that sort of thing, and then they create stories and that to um, uh, create science fiction and more fiction. And then um, it just stimulates the imagination. I don't have too much to say on that at this stage, but uh, I'll, I'll listen more to what you guys have to say and get an idea of how the whole thing works. All right, great. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, look, as I say, we, uh, we, we, have, we have only one rule, um, and that's Trevor's rule, and, and that is that there are no rules. And if okay, you think there are, if... good. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we, we roll with the conversation and. Uh, and uh, and see, see where it takes us. Uh, uh, and, and again, you know, Trevor's breaking the rules by trying to interrupt me while I'm talking. So, Trevor, please go ahead. 
Yeah, hello, hello. <laughs> I'm talking into my watch, Ed. I don't know where that came from. Um, but maybe if you were watching Star Trek, you would have seen uh, the beginnings of this. And I, uh, Steve Jobs must have been watching it as well, I'm sure. Uh, Ed, Ed, can you hear me? Can you hear me? No, of course. Um, look, the only reason I've got <laughs> the only reason I've got Les Wilton on here uh, is just so that he can uh, tell you guys that I was extremely well behaved at school, Lee. Um, uh, he happened to be in one of the years that that I was trying to get out of matric. Um, I think he managed to get out of it the first time, uh, and that is no fiction. So. Uh, Les will corroborate any story over the, the coming years <laughs> as to who I was, how well behaved I was at school, uh, yeah. and that I just sat quietly in the front of the class and, and right. did nothing wrong. Les, yes? Well, that's, that's sort of tongue-in-cheek stuff, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> you, I suppose you're a fairly good boy. You're quite diligent and uh, quite sporty involved in all sorts of things in the band and cricket and swimming and everything like that, water polo, so... Yeah, I mean, quite a quite an active fellow in school, very very well, active, in fact. There, therein lies a work of fiction uh, as well. If you said diligent, yeah, <laughs> okay, but uh, I'm I'm going to go and let others have the channel okay. here. Uh, nice to hear you, Les. Nice to hear you, Ed, uh, talking into my watch. Which yeah, I yeah. Yeah, yeah right. I, I mean, it, it took it it it, it took me about uh, fifteen years to get Trevor to actually get a cell phone. Uh, you know, he, he far preferred to use mine. It was um, it was much cheaper that way. Um, but uh, yeah. anyway, <laughs> so uh, Ish, welcome, welcome back. I uh, haven't seen you for a little while. Uh, yeah, yeah. So your thoughts I, on on fiction becoming fact? Well, I believe anything that has become a reality was once a fiction. You you talk about any 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 stuff. You talk about the airplane when the Wright brothers were working on it. Their dad their dad was saying that they are they have gone insane they are in the devil's company any 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 pick up any invention that you have it all begins with a fiction if you cannot think it you will never be able to make it so for me fiction is it may sound like a fantasy it takes a lot of energy to come up with something fictitious but it takes even more energy to put your heart and put your brain in to making that fiction come true and we have seen that happening uh, with artificial intelligence we have seen that happening with airplanes you, you name any invention and then you'll find that once when it was being worked upon that that person was uh, tagged as somebody who is mad and then years later the same person is then renowned as somebody who, done, who did miracles yeah absolutely thanks thanks for that Ish. yeah uh, so yeah, everything starts with a dream. Starts with uh, starts with a thought. Really? So Kamal, welcome, welcome back. Uh, your thoughts? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, hello, everyone. So in terms of uh, my thinking, fiction is uh, completely related. So if you want to convert the fiction to the uh, fact, you need to put energy in that. You need to brainstorm. You need to have a teamwork. And uh, like you need to work 24 hours 7. If you want to make that in reality useful for everyone in the industry, in the world. So Gramophone discovered a phone. That was a fiction. He discovered that phone. Now it has become real reality. And uh, from that big phone that has converted into the small phones. And now iPods uh, are coming. Transparent technology is coming. That transparent technology till now is a fiction. But in future, uh, it's a, uh, like uh, all, all like, uh, like uh, engineers are working on that, and that will become a reality. Uh, what idea? If anyone has an idea in his mind, uh, that is a fiction, and uh, until unless he doesn't brainstorm and until unless he doesn't uh, uh, like uh, put some efforts on that, it's a uh, it will not become a reality. In soft industry, in my industry, it is everything is a fiction. If I talk about I want to bring my business online, that's a fiction until unless I don't bring online. So that's completely like uh, idea is a fiction. If it is a physical product, you are uh, like converting that idea into the physical product that becomes fact. Right, thanks, uh, thanks, Kamal. 
Right, uh, Tobiso, I see you've been struggling a little bit with your connection, but uh, hopefully you're online and you can hear us. Uh, like to hear your thoughts on fiction becoming mm -hmm. fact. Well, I, okay, hello everyone. Well, I think that you can make anything um, happen. Um, imagination is important, of course. Imagination can manifest. Saying that, of course, fiction is not really argued. Fiction, <laughs> anything as you know, because I think. Sorry, Tobisa, can I just can I just stop you for a second? There, if I can just ask everyone just to switch their videos off temporarily, just to help uh, with his his bandwidth there. Okay, Tabisa, yeah, let's try again. Your, your sound was breaking up a little bit there, so let's just see if we can hear you better now. Maybe even turn your own, your own video okay. off if, if you like, yeah. Okay. Okay, yes, as I was saying, I don't think there's anything, um, I don't think there's anything, I don't think there's anything, I don't think there's, you can say there's anything of fiction that if you can, and think that in this, yeah, my my out of that if you can see something in your mind, you can actually manifest that actually thing um in reality. You know, um, I don't think there's anything. I don't think there's such a thing known as fiction. It's, um, I think that's just my opinion for now. I think I've also been shipwreck, so yeah. All right, thanks, thanks to be so. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, your sound was breaking up a bit on us, but uh, right, everyone, you can you can come back on onto visual. Uh, right, Jasper, uh, over to you. Everyone, and uh, just to remind one on the rule that uh, Ivan also stated there, and that's the are no rules, so that means. Whatever the topic is, flip it to whatever you wanted to say anyway. Um, but, uh, the that's, that's Trevor's not, rule. Yeah, that's Trevor's rule. But it's a convenient rule, so uh, we'll leave it at that. But uh, yeah, fiction to fact. And uh, then I said, all right, but fiction, where does fiction start? It's, uh, it starts in the imagination. <coughs> and I must say, I'm really fascinated uh, so there, there are a few uh, good stories and uh, on TV, these series, where people just wa wa weave into the story daily activity, fun comic kind of setting, and I'm just amazed at the the screenwriter's imagination to to create these stories that you can it literally draw you in and keep you captivated and you looking forward to the next one but you know it's fiction but it's for you in that moment it 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 um, just tick the box in terms of yes I've experienced something like that or I can imagine that uh, reality so I think it comes back to the power of imagination and it looks like we've had consensus uh, in this room today that everybody says, yes, everything that currently exists was once someone's imagination. Um, and uh, I know uh, uh, Ed uh, vigorously shaked his head there, uh, and I'd like to get his comment on that back. But uh, with, with Ed having said that, that I love, love this uh, visual illustration of you can leave a typewriter in a bunch of monkeys and you can come back. doesn't matter how long you give them, they're still not going to write the Shakespeare book. Um, which uh, uh, make me say then, why do we believe the stories of Darwin? And you're right, I, I, I agree with Ed on that one, that monkeys can't write a Shakespeare book, it doesn't matter how much they type that and play around on that typewriter. But yet people believe uh, other very far-fetched uh, theories uh, out there. But coming back to more practical things then, um, I think a guy who's almost a modern day fiction writer and bringing fiction into reality is someone like Elon Musk, um, you know, moving from boring tunnels 
because in his world, he's already seen how one will live in Mars. And again, I can't see why anyone wants to live in Mars when you have the Earth. But he's preparing for that. And with uh, huge strides in the technology of tunnel boring uh, and then space, bring a rocket into space and land it back on a ship uh, and, uh, you know, space travel. So I'm, I'm thanking uh, God for all these uh, people with big imaginations. And some of the earlier speakers have talked about the, the Wright brothers who invented uh, uh, flight and, and all the other things that we see around us. And I think the, the new breakthroughs that we will see is, is going small, but, but incredibly small is uh, that, uh, you know, the one, uh, I think Kumala talked about how the, the first phones was almost like a massive brick. Uh, now uh, it is already that you, you, your phones are, are already your uh, recipients and you can speak with a little earphone um, of, and it, it becomes our way of communication and, and, and uh, cell phone technology and how everything is just condensed. So nanotechnology, robotics, uh, all these things is going to become a, a very interesting uh, thing in the future. And uh, it would be interesting to, to just let our imagination go and say, what would the world look like five years from now? What would the world look like 10 years from now? Because of all these imagine, uh, imaginative people and now with technology, it's easy to dream up a business this morning and by this evening, if I know how to put it on the web, I'm already in the, the eyes of the world as a fully functioned business. So uh, yeah, so I think then with that is also a, a bit of hope. Uh, if you have, if you thought of yourself as that your story up till now wasn't good, then uh, well, rewrite the story. So I think we have the power of imagination to go back in our own lives and rewrite our stories and reinterpret our stories. And uh, I see uh, <laughs> uh, Trevor is catching on there with his uh, story and reimagining himself. But yeah, so I'd leave it at that. Yeah, I'm not too sure whether Trevor's trying to hit himself over the head with that brick or he's actually uh, trying, to, <laughs> trying to talk talk through it. But yes, Ed, I believe you want to respond to yes for that. <laughs> well, no, actually, I, I just wanted to change my view because I, I, I was saying that, that fiction doesn't become fact. And then Jasper just mentioned something that reminded me it does. I don't know whether you guys get a program called uh, The Muppets. There's, there's a sketch in the Muppets called Pigs in Space. And, and a, a couple of days ago, Ivan, you were telling me about Elon Musk's plan to take goats into space. So there you go. F fiction becomes fact. Um, but I do think we do tend to look for things that, that support the view and we overlook the things that don't support the view. I, I'm trying to remember, and, and I'm, I'm quite happy to be proved wrong. I can't remember any book that, that, that made electricity fiction before electricity was discovered. So I think uh, we, <laughs> we just kind of like, we want to see it. And of course there will be things that come up in fiction because men think, or people think, sorry, I'm getting my own um, <laughs> uh, prejudices coming in there people think and therefore th some of them things will happen but it doesn't necessarily mean that everything will and, and, and the classic one is time travel if time travel was possible some would have come and visited us by now because they'd have invented it in the future and come back so it can't be possible so not everything in fiction becomes fact that's my mm -hmm. my thing I, I just wanted to say that because Jasper said everyone was the same view I am not of the view that that, that fiction becomes fact. And I'm a fiction writer, so, you know, there you go. Thanks, Ed. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you obviously missed Trevor's introduction of Valiant Thor yesterday. He's a time traveler and, he, you know, he was chatting, okay. chatting to Eisenhower in the 50s, I think it was. So, uh, who, who knows? Who knows? Uh, you know, maybe maybe, maybe Isha, Isha's come back from the future. I'm not sure, but uh, <laughs> we, uh, you know, the, the, the question is what, is, what is fact and what is fiction? Uh, you know, and as again, as we chatted yesterday, I think it comes down to people's perceptions. Yes, come on. Yeah. So this uh, topic, uh, I think, is totally related to the uh, what you think 
that will happen so if you have ideas or vision in your mind and if you are going in that direction or in thinking in that direction only that will uh, become the uh, into the fact and that is totally related to your thinking and that will happen so both are like uh, uh, these topics are correlated with each other absolutely thank thank you yeah All right uh, trevor i don't know if you wanted to add anything on to your uh, brick conversation but uh... Yeah, I must just apologize uh, to Les Wilton for coming on board and having to hear Ed Chapman. Uh, it's only because Ed runs around the Kalahari Desert for five to 10 days at a time, Les. Um, this boy is the trail running man. You guys have got to connect um, uh, because there's some commonality between the two of yourselves. So uh, have some good chats. Thanks, thanks, Trevor. Yeah, so I'm just going to finish off with one of my favorite quotes, you know, from George Bernard Shaw. And, the, you know, the reasonable man adapts himself to the world, the unreasonable one persists in trying to adapt the world to himself. Therefore, all progress depends on the unreasonable man. And uh, if we didn't have any unreasonable men thinking up fiction and turning it into fact, uh, you know, we would have no progress. Um, and, you know, Trevor just goes backwards because he picks up bricks and talks to them. But, uh, you know, some of us, some of us actually try and move forward. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Earth calling Trevor, earth calling Trevor. Come in Trevor. <laughs> right. Okay. I think that sort of more or less wraps us up for today. Lee, uh, some thoughts on a topic for tomorrow or anybody else want to check, check a topic into the hat for tomorrow? Um, I have got an idea, but I'm happy for, sorry. <coughs> Uh, to be open to other ideas, but Elon Musk's name comes up over and over again. Sorry. <coughs> oh, okay. You're right. Okay. Down, down, down the early morning gin and tonic. Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. Um, so, wondering if we can talk about him. What do we know about him? And what can we learn from him? Um, so I, I think we, we, we refer to him so often that we now need to dedicate a whole wisdoms chat to Elon Musk. Um, and uh, yeah, come on. Yeah, these days I am reading the book on the Elon Musk only. So the topic is easy for me. <laughs> well, you have to right, be here good. tomorrow then, come on. Okay. Okay. Well, well, I will we'll bring my you, book. <laughs> good, 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 good lead off. Lead off the con conversation after you've jumped on onto the Hyperloop to get here quickly. All right, good. Well, everybody, have a fantastic day further. Thanks to those of you who joined us for the first time. Hope we will see you again and we'll have another engaging uh, Wisdoms Chat uh, tomorrow morning, same time, same place. But we're we'll back on just in half an hour in the UK uh, on the same, same call. So if you've got some time, hop on in half an hour with us uh, on the UK chats, different topic. Uh, and we'll we'll chat then. And then at three o'clock this afternoon, we're off to the US. So you can pop in pop in then as well if you if you're so inclined. Three o'clock our time. So uh, that's GMT plus two for those of you who are in different time zones. Um, but otherwise, have a great day further, and we hope to see you soon. Have a good one. Cheers, folks. Good day, everyone.